everybody. Well, it comes down to this. Welcome to the awards show for the 2023 High Altitude Balloon Challenge. My name is Captain Bob Roberts. I'm with the Greenville Composite Squadron, and we're going to walk through all the winners today. Before we get started, I want to give out a couple of thank yous. You know, this, this program doesn't happen in a vacuum. It takes a large group of people, and Susan Millette from the national team and myself, we can't do it without just you know, an army of people uh, that oftentimes go unrecognized. So we want to make sure we recognize a couple of key individuals here. So first of all, we want to recognize Aaron Angelini. Now, Aaron Angelini, uh, Colonel Aaron Angelini now, um, just took over the, uh, the wing commander position for the Indiana wing. Um, Matter of fact, he was just in the process of taking over uh, command of Indiana uh, when he got a call from me saying, hey, I need your help. <laughs> and he jumped right in with both feet. Um, he just took charge. Uh, and, and we really thank you, uh, Colonel Angelini, for your help. Uh, really helped make the day go good. We, wouldn't, we would have had a hard time getting our airplanes and ground teams out if it wasn't for Colonel Angelini. So thank you very much to him. We also want to thank Lieutenant Colonel Karen Cooper. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Cooper is really the backbone of this team. Uh, anytime you, you all submit your submissions, she's the one who's organizing all of that. Um, so if you have questions on if you submitted something, if we got it, she's the one who's answering those questions. She's ensuring that everybody has met the deadlines. Um, she's really the glue that's holding all of this together behind the scenes. So can't thank her enough. Next, I want to thank Major uh, Julie Sixpanis. Now, Julie is the New Hampshire Wings DAE, um, and she, what, her along with Susan, did the majority of the grading. Uh, as you can imagine, it takes quite a bit of time per team to take a look at everything that you've submitted. Now multiply that times the 100 teams that have submitted. You're talking about a lot of hours of work. Um, and they go through a very specific rubric. Um, and honestly, you know, the winners were really close this year um, within a few points. And so they had their work cut out for them. So I really want to thank uh, Julie for all of her help with, with judging this year. Um, and then lastly but not leastly, we have two individuals that were both on site um, and that's Lieutenant Michael Dean and Lieutenant Michael Austin. Um, they are teachers at the school and they organize everything. They organize everybody coming in, they organize the food, they organize working with our vendor to make sure they know where to park, uh, making sure the field is set up. They work with the administrators at the school to make everything is lined up. Um, so to Michael Dean and Michael Austin, thank you. You know, Michael Austin specifically has been with us since the very beginning, and we really rely on him. He just, we don't even think about it. We just know he's got it. Um, so we'll have a couple of conversations to say, hey, y'all good? He'll say, we're good. We just trust him. So for those individuals, thank you very much. There's a whole team of people uh, around them that are doing pieces as well. So thank you to the whole team. And with that, I want to bring in General Felka. He has some comments as well. General Felka, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm Major General Edward Felka, CAP's CEO and National Commander. As this six-month National STEM mission has come to an end, with the National Award recipients being announced tonight, I would just like to share my appreciation with all the cadets and their adult leaders who took the extra time to participate in the third annual National High Altitude Balloon Challenge for Cadets. Over 950 cadets from 115 squadrons representing all eight regions plus overseas units, accepted the National STEM Challenge this year. We know each squadron spent countless hours going above and beyond the regular squadron obligations to create over 1,000 innovative experiments to be tested near the edge of space. My gratitude is also extended to the Indiana Wing senior members and cadets for their SAREX support as they helped track the three balloons launched from the Anderson Preparatory Academy Cadet Squadron's home base. Indiana Wing ground teams worked to retrieve the three payloads to be returned to the squadrons for experiment analysis and reporting. This has truly been a combination of the CAP's three main missions, all in one single activity. Tonight, we are eagerly awaiting the announcement of the national winner of the 2023 Kittinger Cup 
and $5,000 prize donated by the Kittinger family in Colonel Joe Kittinger's memory. Other war awards will be announced for winners of the mission patches, video reports, and science analysis reports. Those winners will receive grants from our treasured partner, the Air and Space Forces Association. Through this program, as each team researched science opportunities to improve how humans can live and work in space, I know that each of you also explored how you could work better as a team to accomplish a challenging goal. I applaud each of you for this extra effort and hope that what you have learned through this program will help propel you toward greater challenges of innovation and accomplishment. Thank you for your participation in the 2023 High Altitude Balloon Challenge. Well, thank you, General Falca. I want to point out that we actually have one more important person that's maybe a new name to some of you, and I want to make sure I introduce them to you. And that is Dr. Shayla Broadway. Um, as many of you may or may not know, our Director for Aerospace Education at the National, Dr. Montgomery, actually just retired just a few months ago. Um, and it was Dr. Shayla Broadway. Uh, she has now been in place as the Interim Director of AE. And Dr. Broadway has helped us and uh, has been really supportive of this program. So thank you very much, Shayla. We appreciate you. Okay, so before we announce the winners, uh, a couple of important announcements. Number one is that if any team expected to win in one or more categories and did not do so, consider a couple of possible reasons. One, there is a lot of really incredible submissions. Um, we had literally things come down to one point between some teams. It was so close. Um, also, the second thing is somebody may have failed to follow the rubric. Um, the judging team follows that rubric really tightly. And so if you missed an item in the rubric, then you wouldn't get any points for that. And that may have been the difference between becoming a top tier or a winning team and a team that just didn't quite make it. Um, so in the years from now, uh, you know, just make sure that you're following those rubrics. Now, I want to also thank our partners. So our partners for the High Altitude Balloon Challenge are the AFA Awards Grant. Um, this is the Air and Space Forces Association. They provide the money for the uh, award grants for the top three units in each of the submission categories. So we want to give them a lot of gratitude. Thank you very much to the AFA. Um, the winners will also be able to conduct more STEM projects in the coming year with those grants. And with that, it is time to finally get to announcing our winners. So our first category is the hand-drawn mission patch. Now the description that you submitted when you submitted your hand-drawn patch was also a big part of your selection uh, for who the winners were. So some teams did a really nice job of explaining uh, what was in their patch, um, how it was put together, the symbolism of the patch, and that really helped to tell the story. And so uh, if you're a team that's gonna um, compete next year, we also recommend you do. We don't want a, a book about it, um, but a nice little paragraph uh, describing your patch is definitely helpful for us. So for the hand-drawn mission patch finalists, we had our runner-ups, each are gonna get a $150 grant, and they are the San Francisco Cadet Squadron 86, as well as the 9th Suffolk Cadet Squadron. Congratulations to you two. All right, we also wanted to recognize one additional group, and that is the Delaware Air National Guard Cadet Squadron. Um, we sometimes had the liberty of having an extra award, and that's what the team decided to do here. Um, so our one-time extra winner for the hand-drawn patch Again, is Delaware Air National Guard, and they're going to win a $150 grant. We thought that their um, memorial uh, to Joe Kittinger was just fantastic. We loved it. Uh, we'll talk about Joe a little bit more at, at the end of the show. Okay, and the winner for this year's 2023 hand-drawn patch is the Granite Cadet Squadron out of Maryland 879. Um, they called their patch Unity and Better Together. And they are going to win a $200 grant, uh, and they'll be placed on the 2023 certificates. Um, great job to you. We really enjoyed your patch. Thank you very much for your submission. All right, now we're going to move on to our digitally drawn mission patches. Uh, similar to the hand-drawn, if you had a description that kind of explained the patch, 
how it was put together, the symbolism of the patch. Sometimes it actually really helped um, the grading for your patch. Uh, one other thing I really want to point out, uh, especially for the years following now, is there's a lot of easy ways to do AI generated graphics. Um, our, we, we want to make sure that you do not use AI generated graphics. Um, in the future, it's probably going to be really hard to tell if somebody used an AI generated graphic. But sometimes it's like, you know, when the kid does the box car for elementary school and they show up with like this really fancy red Lamborghini, you know, the parents did it. <laughs> so um, so please make sure that you do not use any AI generation. We really want to see people doing, um, you know, digitally drawn uh, without AI. Um, all right. So with that, our two finalists, uh, each receiving one hundred and fifty dollars is Middletown Cadet Squadron, Delaware, twenty five as well as Curtis Wright Composite Squadron, New Jersey 73. All right, and that leads us to our winner of the digitally drawn mission patch, and that is Santa Barbara Composite Squadron 131, California 240. Um, congratulations to Santa Barbara. Uh, you have received $200 grant and also the placement on the 2023 certificate. Congratulations. All right, so now we are going to move on to our pre-launch finalists. Uh, again, for those that don't know, there's two video categories. One is a pre-launch and the other one is a post-launch. Um, you could put your pre-launch information into the post-launch. May teams did that. Um, but we wanted to kind of see your work and your progress working on your projects prior to the launch. And so that's what the pre-launch video is. Um, with that, we had two finalists. They were both $150 grants. And the first finalist is Arizona 334, Davis um, Monthan, hopefully, hopefully I pronounced that right, um, Composite Squadron, and uh, Buffalo Composite Squadron, uh, New York 22. Uh, nice to see Buffalo in there. Uh, Buffalo is my hometown. Um, I had no, no say in the judging. <laughs> um, but uh, congratulations to both uh, uh, Davis Monthan um, and Buffalo. Okay, moving on to our winner of the pre-launch video, uh, receiving a $200 grant, and that's going to be North Carolina 48 Raleigh Wake Composite Squadron. Um, all of these videos, if you would like, you can click on, you can go onto the HAB website. Um, you can click on the links inside this presentation, and it'll take you directly to their videos. I'll also, in the description down below, put links to each of their videos. So uh, head on over to their videos and, um, you know, give them some love. Say congratulations. They're not all in YouTube, but most of them are. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our science experiment reports. With the experiment research, results and relevance to future space exploration. Um, I, I want to stop here real quick to just also point out that Colonel Joe, he was adamant that the science was most important. Uh, we can make things pretty uh, which sometimes you have to, you have to sell it. Um, but in the end, the end science is the goal. Um, so with that, we're going to start seeing the awards go up a little bit. Um, and so the finalists um, for the science slides uh, each receive $250. Um, I recommend that everybody that can go take a look at these slides. They're incredible, first of all. Second of all, you know, if you ever are looking to become an engineer or a scientist, you'll go into the hallways of research buildings and you'll see these big boards on the walls looking exactly like these. Um, so this is really good practice um, to show you how it actually is done. You're selling your projects to other scientists, other engineers, the people walking the halls. Um, you're trying to teach them about your project in a very quick manner. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at our first finalist winning $250 for the science experiment report. And that is Indiana 015 Nampa Composite Squadron. Um, congratulations to them. Now Nampa Composite actually did their experiment, I thought it was really interesting, um, to try to figure out how you would work on self-maneuvering a balloon um, and how you would do the orientation tracking of that balloon. It was really amazing to see that they could put that type of experiment in the size of a small vial. Um, so if anybody has a chance, take a look at their, their science slide. Uh, it's got lots of great information. Our second finalist receiving also $250 for their science experiment report is Minnesota 116, St. Cloud Composite Squadron. Fantastic job on you. Now St. Cloud Composite, they did their experiment 
But how is film, the old photographic film, for those, for those of you young, uh, they're only used to using digital cameras, um, you know, how is the film in an older style camera, how is that affected by the high altitudes? Um, you know, we're not quite into space. You know, all the balloons got to 100,000 feet. So, you know, but that's really, really high. And we're, we're, you know, we're close to the same atmosphere as what you would have on Mars. Um, so how, how is that atmosphere, how is that radiation affecting uh, the film? Because there are some applications where you probably still want to use film, but you don't want to use uh, digital. Maybe you're using film to actually see what happens to the film. Um, where digital wouldn't take it wouldn't matter. So so great job uh, on them. We've seen uh, film discussions a lot. We had a, a winner last year who also did a film experiment. Um, so always interested to see their results. Okay, so the winner of the $350 grant for the science experiment report is Florida 447, Clearwater Composite Squadron. Um, first of all, their data was fantastic. Um, they, they looked at the effects of high altitudes on coffee beans. Um, again, radiation, you know, we're talking about things like film, coffee beans. We're really looking at what does the exposure of the atmosphere and radiation do to those objects. Um, so their scientific principles were just straight, just really, really great. Um, and their graphics, how they put their graphics together on their slide, really visually appealing. If I was walking down a hallway, I would stop and look at this slide um, and, and read what they did. Um, now you gotta have the science to back it up. If you just make a pretty picture, uh, but there's no science. Okay. You know, if anything, you wasted five minutes of my time as I try to learn about your project. Um, uh, but if you've got good science and good graphics, that's what this is all about. Um, so fantastic job to uh, Clearwater. Okay. And now we're going to move on to our documentary videos. So these videos are created after the end of the project is over and you've done your experiments, you've reviewed them. Um, and so now you're sharing your results pretty much from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. And if you win the, the Kittinger Cup, you know, how would you use the $5,000 uh, money? So with that, we have two finalists uh, for the documentary video, and they're both going to receive $250 grants. The first is Massachusetts 007, Goddard Cadet Squadron, as well as Florida 293, Patrick Composite Squadron. Again, we'll put a link down below for you to uh, check out their videos. All right, so the winner for the documentary video and the receiver of a $350 grant is somebody that if you've been in the High Altitude Balloon Challenge the last couple of years, you're going to know their name pretty well. And that's Virginia 007 William P. Knight Composite Squadron. They're back. Um, and th they did another incredible job. So congratulations to all of them on that team. Um, you know, they, they really take uh, this project pretty seriously. Um, you know, showing their past wins. And uh, so great job to everybody on that team once again. Uh, we'll have a link to that video down in the description below. Okay, so this is it. Let's move on now to the 2023 Colonel Joe Kidger Cup and the $5,000 cash prize. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm sorry to say, uh, Colonel Joe did pass away uh, this year and we're going to greatly miss him. However, in talking with the family, Colonel Joe was super supportive of every single one of you in this program. Um, and he wanted to make sure that this, this continued and that, that he was able to support this in the long run. And so with that, um, his family is now also supporting this program with the $5,000 uh, award prize. So, so one, uh, we want to say thank you, Colonel Joe, uh, for everything you've done for us. Um, down here on this little, this little blue ball. And uh, thank you to the family for continuing to support the project. With that, let's go ahead and look at the finalists. Uh, one quick caveat is that if you are a winner or a finalist uh, of the, the Colonel Joe Kittinger Cup um, and you were a finalist in another category, um, you are going to receive one grant. You're going to receive the grant for the higher amount. Uh, so just an FYI, that's how the, the team decided to do that, try to be fair with the money that we had. Okay, the Kittinger Cup is determined by the highest cumulative score across all the rubrics. You had to submit something in every category. Um, you, you only had to submit a hand-drawn or a digital patch, uh, but you had to submit at least one of those. Um, and you had to submit something in every other category 
uh, to even be qualified for it. Uh, obviously, you probably wouldn't get enough points anyways if you got a zero in one of those categories. Um, but you had to submit something to even be eligible. Uh, so there were quite a few teams that didn't submit on everything, and that's okay. We know people and teams are busy. Um, but if you were going to try to win the Kinder Cup either this year or in future years, you have to submit something in each one. Um, and then the winner is decided by the cumulative score across the entire rubric. Okay, so our third place $400 grant winner is Missouri 127 Trail of Tears Composite Squadron. Congratulations to you. And I will put a link um, to their video down below as well. Our $500 second place winner is North Carolina 48 Raleigh Wake Composite Squadron. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you guys got different leaders in that group, different cadet leaders. Um, you all did a really fantastic job this year. Um, you guys have been strong in the previous years too, obviously, but um, really fantastic job this year. Um, personally, I hope that you guys uh, you really push hard. Um, and you, you take part of this again next year. Um, you're, you're, you're in my, my preseason leadership bracket already. So uh, congratulations on your second place. Okay, and that leads us to this year's winner. Um, again, as I mentioned before, we want to give a special shout out and very much thank you to uh, Mrs. Uh, Kittinger, uh, Colonel Joe's uh, wife. Um, she, we worked with her, and she was the one that helped to make sure we pro were provided uh, the award money. Um, so thank you. And with that, the winner of this year's Kittinger Cup and the $5,000 award is Wisconsin 183 Stevens Point Composite Squadron. Congratulations. Okay, so Stevens Point did their experiment on cold welding in low Earth orbit. Um, I got to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I hope that somebody from NASA sees this slide. Um, you know, some of your cadets may get a phone call. Um, maybe they can take part in maybe some of the experiments that NASA is doing. Because um, I know for a fact that NASA is looking at this as well. Um, and maybe the cadets actually got some of their inspiration from something they saw that NASA was working on. Um, the science slide was just phenomenal. Um, it, was, it was intense, had a lot of data, uh, a lot of information, but it was still broken apart into sections, which made it digestible. The video was fantastic. The idea was fantastic. Their team just seemed to work together really, really well. Um, so congratulations to Stevens Point. Um, again, we are going to show the link uh, to their video down below. Again, okay, we really want to make sure that we take an opportunity to, again, thank the Air and Space Forces Association, the AFA, um, and the, Aeros the Aerospace Education Council for their general support um, of all the grants that were part of our awards. And finally, before we wrap up, we want to give a special shout out again to Colonel Joe. Um, for many of us that have been part of this program now, this is the third year running, uh, we've had a chance to meet Colonel Joe in person and get a chance to talk to him. And I can tell you that that was really a highlight for me personally in my life uh, to have a chance to meet Colonel Joe. Um, and the one thing that was really evident in, in talking to Colonel Joe is, is his interest and in, his appreciation for all of you. Um, you know, he never made this about himself. Um, he always wanted to make sure, even though we talk about Colonel Joe a lot, he wanted to make sure that that focus was put on all of you. And so whether you won an award or not, we hope that, you know, maybe this sparked something. Maybe you learned something. You worked, learned how to work with a team or you learned something in science and engineering. Maybe, you know, maybe you are looking at a new career. Maybe you weren't thinking about being a scientist or engineer. Maybe one of you is going to be an aerospace engineer. Maybe one of you will help design the, one of the next rockets that's going to take us, you know, to Mars and beyond. Um, that was Colonel Joe's passion to get all of you interested. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you again to everybody who took part in the 2023 Housing Balloon Challenge, whether you were a volunteer, whether you were a cadet, or one of your the senior members helping the cadets. Um, so many incredible projects this year. I can't think of a much better way to end the 2023 How to Balloon Challenge than other than reading a quote from Colonel Joe himself. We're at 103,000 feet. As you look up, the sky looks beautiful, but hostile. As you sit here, you realize that man will never conquer space. He will learn to live with it, but he will never conquer it. All right, everybody. On behalf of my co-director, Susan Lutman, and myself, Bob Roberts, we want to say thank you for everybody taking part of the program. 
We hope that you all had a great experience with it. We all hope that you join us again next year. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day.